You're listening to the Paul Higgins Show, the place for ambitious tech consultants scaling to live better after 18 years as a global leader and having a successful tech consulting exit. I'm sharing what's working now to transform emerging tech consultants worldwide into trusted consultants that attract the best clients and deliver measurable results. When you're ready to level up your clarity, results and freedom, Begin with the free strategic profits blueprint available at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash blueprint. Imagine this, a major client who you want to land is checking out your socials, your website, and they're also checking out the same of two other contenders. And what do they see? Hello, I'm Paul Higgins, and welcome to the Paul Higgins Show. In this podcast, our guests will help you stand out in the sea of sameness so that you can win over that major deal versus those two contenders. Peter Gorrell has 11 years of experience in social media business strategy, and he's helping businesses cut through the noise and reach their target audiences with customized and effective social media media solutions put is a three-stage program that covers awareness education and engagement which helps to define their brand value capabilities and voice and create and publish content that showcases their experience and attracts new clients which is what we all want peter's mission is to empower businesses to achieve their full potential and grow their online presence and reputation now over to peter gorrell from art envy Great to have you here, Peter. Excellent. Nice to see you too, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Look, we were introduced by mutual friend Alex McKay, who was on a previous episode, and uh, he spoke about, you know, how you can exit your business, whether it's, uh, he predominantly works with Salesforce and HubSpot and NetSuite, but you could be any uh, tech consultant that's looking to exit your business. So please go and check that out. But then a lot of the fantastic work that sits behind the scenes for Alex is done by Peter. So I said, who's doing all your work? And here we are. Why don't we kick off with who your ideal client is and then what problems you love to solve for them? In a short phrase, uh, it's an individual who has the same values as I do. Don't go on demographics. It doesn't matter whether actually it's an individual or an organization. And Their value is that that they prioritize and recognize the importance of actually getting their message out, like an authentic message. And really, that's it. It, I I cut to the chase on that answer, as it were, because it is quite simple. Yeah, brilliant. And and what is stopping them from getting that message out? What, What are you helping them to do that they can't do themselves? Well, it's generally, I look at it this way. Business, you know, if you're if you're busy following up on your, on your leads, and if you're busy, you know, trying to generate business, you probably don't have time as much to market it. And uh, some people like maybe they're not that keen on developing, you know, maybe some posts and following up with it, that kind of thing. You know, there's 101 reasons probably that somebody doesn't do something, right? And it sometimes it's just pure laziness, right? <laughs> in all honesty. But in most cases, it's because they're using their time on better things. And that's why they would utilize an individual like myself. Yeah. And when you say message, I know that if you're working with, you know, an author or something, you know, there's a message that they've already got. And I suppose it's easy. But when you're a tech consultant, you know, that message is a little bit harder to define at times. You know, give some examples of what a message looks like when you're a, a tech consultant versus some of your thought leaders and, and experts that you work with. Every message is unique to the individual. I actually start with the person rather than actually the subject matter. In fact, in all honesty, I try not to get too buried in the weeds with either product or services. I actually deal with the individual. I mean, um, my business is that you are your brand. And so in all honesty, I'm more interested in exposing the real story behind the client. Like, why are they in business? Uh, What do they stand for? What don't they stand for? What will they tolerate? Those kinds of things. Yeah. And look, you know, we were talking before we went on air that yesterday for another client, I went through and researched 25 websites of Salesforce partners. 
And um, unfortunately, I was shocked at some of the, the websites that I saw and, and probably you're sitting here listening to Peter and I at the moment thinking, yeah, God, it's on my to-do list, you know, like it's on that list that never, never gets done, but it's on the to-do list. But, you know, often it was just the wall of Salesforce was everywhere. So it was like there was no point of difference to most of the partners, right? And the ones that did really jumped out. Some people say, well, I'm getting enough business already. Why would I even want? to go to the effort of putting me more in into the business and me more into my marketing. So, you know, when people you know, obviously have that opinion, what, what, what do you say? You know, I'll ask it. it's, a, it's a matter of uh, uh, defining yourself and, and, you know, giving your company and your uh, brand some definition. I mean, let's face it, there are a lot of consultants out there and you've got it right when you said, you know, they're all carrying the Salesforce banner or the NetSuite banner, whatever the uh, SaaS product is. The difference is, who are you? Because in all honesty, your client is actually not concerned with the actual product. It knows that it's dealing with a good product, but it's like, who can best serve me? Who understands my challenges? Who actually has experienced something that I'm going through? Those are the kinds of questions, actually, a really well-placed brand answer. Yeah, I think that's a, a brilliant. And I've seen a lot of success where someone's been in a particular field, whether it's, you know, construction, manufacturing or whatever, and Salesforce, NetSuite, Zoho, whatever was introduced into their business, they saw the power of, they loved it. And then they've gone out and left to do it for others. And they're the ones that are often successful because they've got knowledge of the industry. So they really understand the industry. They under, understand it. And then they've got a story to tell, right? Because it was their unique story that led them to doing what they're doing versus like you said, just saying, hi, I'm a, another ex consultant. Have you got some examples of how or success in personal messaging within this space, right? Like give us some examples so we can get a better grasp of how, what good looks like, what success looks like. Well, the reality is that person, if they come to the to the front with their actual experience message, it's usually talking about, I know your pains. I've lived your life. I'm an ex-CEO of a certain company, or I've been the number two in a certain style of organization. And I know that what drives organizations actually is revenue. And in order to get revenue, you either have to jump on the phone and start cold calling, which is you know, it's all right for some things, but it's mostly dead. You have to send your message through the internet outbound so that people will capture it. And you've got to do it in most cases on a daily basis. You know, it takes a lot of repetitive actions on your part to let people know, yes, I understand your situation. This is what I used to do. And here's how we go about it. In the same way that I actually go from actually out go out for my business, I actually show my clients by doing rather than, you know, by saying, like, I'm a servant leader. I'm not a person who actually drops things on people and says, go do it, right? I actually show them how to do it. Yeah. And that how to do it, what sort of the, you know, for you, what's the key essentials to building your personal brand? Well, I actually spend a lot of time with the individual up front. I invest heavily on conversations that sometimes go into hours on end. Pre-COVID, I actually used to fly out to clients and we'd stick ourselves in a boardroom all morning and a, and a whiteboard and we'd hash it out. And, I'd, you know, I'd get to know them in the same way that you should be working with your clients, right? Get to know them. What are they like? What are they? What don't they like? What What do they have a low tolerance for? What do they really mean when they say, my goal is this? Put a number to that goal. Put a flavor to that goal. Put an experience to that goal. That's the way that you'll be, what shall we say, considered attractive to the outside audience. I mean, you can't just keep pushing, pushing, publishing, publishing. You've got to give them a reason. And it's, and the more authentic that reason is, and the more realistic and down to earth it is, the more likely you're going to click with them. Yeah. And, and when, you know, you've done the hard work, you've sort of got their, their story. 
then it goes to, okay, now I've got, someone's got to produce the content to tell the story. And, and, you know, you mentioned before that often people just don't have the, the time to do that or there's choices, right? You know, I've, I've got to do sales, got to do delivery, what, whatever. There's multiple choices, multiple hats you're wearing as an owner. So once they've got that story and you've crafted it together, then what happens from there? How, how does that content then get out to, to the world? I actually do the execution too. I actually put an agenda together and put a plan together that props something up for them on their social media platforms daily. I'm a believer in the, you know, the daily acquisition of, of uh, leads, not that I'm gonna post something in the middle of the week and hope that by the end of the week I'm doing something. That's not a good plan. Thinking about it's not a good strategy. You literally have to go out and, uh, and I do that. I plug and play on their behalf. In many cases, I ghostwrite uh, for the major player in the organization. I get to know them that well. I will bounce things off them if I'm having some doubts about something. But in most cases, I actually own a background in systems integration, executive recruitment, SaaS solution sales, and infrastructure sales. So, I mean, I really understand the partnership role that most of them have to play, how to collaborate. I, I generally even know quite a bit about the actual individual topics, you know, that they're, that they're working with. And I've been actually working in some various industries too, like transportation, retail operations, financial solutions. I have a, a really well-versed uh, background. And so I'm not nervous about speaking on their behalf, as it were. Right. And so it is a bit of a forgiveness, not permission. So you'll go and publish the content daily and then they'll let you know the ones that they don't think is in your voice versus getting approval for everything. I'm at that point in my life and I'm in that point also in my career where that rarely happens. I will have eventually be just be given carte blanche you know, and, and we'll just rock. There'll be times obviously that you know, that there's miscommunication. It's human nature in itself. So, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Or, I'm, you know, I, I meant to give you this or I should have given you this link instead. But in most cases, my clients entrust me with the messaging. I'm a creative writer to start with. You know, uh, I, like I understand the English language. Yes. Uh, but better than that, I understand the mandate that they have, which is, raising revenue, raising investments, getting it out there and speaking to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And the content that you're producing, let's say for a lot of us, we're on LinkedIn, right? And you're saying that you're doing it daily. You know, is there any particular formats, any particular what's working, what's not working at the moment as far as content on LinkedIn? Uh, good question, actually, because it, it does change. And, you know, the algorithms kind of like uh, beat you up a little bit, you know, <laughs> in the fact that I interview you, my clients a lot in the same way that I actually, you know, I actually have a podcast myself, but I generally interview them. They generally spend about 30 to 40 minutes with me every two weeks. Yeah. And so that I'll put content out of a, out of a, a conversation. I'll ask them questions about how their market is, the kind of problems that they're going through. What do you think people are faced today? You know, where is the economy driving, you know, driving uh, what, you know, so on and so forth like that. And and actually, they don't realize it, but they are the content. You know, the videos are the best content. Blogs, I will actually, from my video recorded sessions with them, I will produce blogs, I will papers, reference material, uh, static posts, videos. I'll do audiograms and I, it'll go wherever they go. I start with LinkedIn, but if they have an Instagram, if they have an Instagram account or a TikTok account, I'll actually put it out there too. Uh, not using Facebook so much for this kind of business, but definitely Instagram, TikTok and uh, LinkedIn for sure. Yeah. And I think it, it's a brilliant a brilliant way of you 
making conversation and content is this interview style. And, you know, I spoke to someone yesterday who said, oh, my team's trying to get me to do video. And, you know, I couldn't think of anything worse to do. And I'm like, well, you're on video now. You're very natural and you're answering things. I said, what's the difference? You know, like if your team or someone expert like Peter interviews you, it's natural. You, You do conversations all the time, right? It just happens to be that someone's recording it versus not. So I think that's a it's a brilliant way of of getting that that content. And uh, also now with AI, so we use Fathom, but there's other AI tools now that record the calls. And then you know you can just go and grab that. You've probably already got so much content already that you can start with that before you even have to create something new. So I think that's the the huge benefit of that interview style. And just on the AI component so um you know we're all talking ai these days where are the benefits you're seeing of ai in creating you as the the personal brand well it helps you fine tune your messaging i rely on it to put some crispness around something i've written already but i won't be sucked in to using it Completely. I like you have to learn to deliberately give the like, say, for instance, if you're using chat GPT, for instance, and that's what most people are using these days is you have to be very deliberate about the uh, directions and the guidance you are giving it. it you can't just say, oh, re- rewrite this professionally because it's not going to sound anything like you. Right? <laughs> you're gonna, yes. It's going to sound like a guy who's got a PhD in English, right? Yes. Stop that. You need to say, you know who I am, because it does know. It picks up momentum from you. You know, you do know who I am, or you may want to say something like, I'm a consultant. I'm not a really good salesperson. However, I would need to get this message out to the general public. How would you recommend I do it? You actually... You put that into ChatGPT, you will be so pleased with what comes back for you. You'll yes. think, oh my gosh, that it knows me. <laughs> yes, it knows you because you just told it about yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and can can you, I know with, uh, you know, 3.4 or I think for version 4 of ChatGDP, you can upload, you know, PDFs, yeah. et cetera. So can you upload know your story you know give it even more information to help with the prompts you can you can give it exactly what you need you can actually you can actually build what you might classify as a scenario i mean think about songwriting or developing a movie or developing a play you start with like there are three people involved in this story this one is this this one is that and this is the other uh, other persona or personality now This person doesn't like this. This person hates when you say things like this. Like, how would you address these three people? Right? You could actually ask it something like that, and it'll actually tell you. Stay. It'll actually say, this is how I would say this for this individual. Almost to the point where you actually, I almost want to say sometimes to chat GPT, thank you. And actually, I've been known to actually say, thank you, that was great. Yes. And they'll and it'll come back with a message that says, "Great, I'm happy for you." And make sure that if you've got any other questions, yeah, ask. So it's almost like having a silent friend in in you know in your office. Yeah, great. Um, we, so just remember, we're listening to Peter Goral, and he's from Art Envy, and we'll have all the links and everything to to Peter, so you can follow him more in our in our show notes at the end. And so so far, we've talked about the. Uh, bringing out your your personal brand, your persona, your story. We've talked about the content, et cetera. We've talked about how you know, AI is uh, aiding that. So that's you creating your content. But I know there's a lot of content that your prospects are creating out on social media. And uh, I'd love to get your thoughts, Peter, on the, the topic that seems to be going around at the moment, which is social selling or social listening. I'd love to get your thoughts on how you can engage on other people's content, not just people engaging on yours. That's a great question. Uh, I get asked all the time, like, what is the best way for someone actually to even get going on, on, on LinkedIn and get going on social media? And posting is not the primary in my mind. What I do 
and I actually do this daily, is actually I go and engage. I look at LinkedIn as if it's a great big trade show. And everyone's everyone's page is really a booth. And and they've got some some people have got some you know great things to show, some great things to tell about. And I look for the things I'm interested in. I mean, just I mean, I we used to all go to trade shows, you know, pre-COVID. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that and they are coming back. Yes. But um ideally I go and see what attracts me. And based on what attracts me, I actually go in, take a look at something that's been written really not well, and I leave my comment or my opinion. And it's amazing what happens to you. Like all the lights go on the minute you actually put something worthwhile, not just like it and click it, but yes. if you put a comment in it about the subject matter, and then on top of that, share it to your own stream, you will attract more business from two sources. Number one, you'll attract the individual that you are supporting because they will actually turn around and say, oh my gosh, this guy, he just liked and shared my material. I'm going to reach out to him and see what he's about. You've got a, a natural communication connection taking place. And then you've got this 600 million or whatever passive audiences watching. And I can tell you, if you think your opinion is isolated as a single one in the world, you're crazy because yes. there are a hundred thousand others watching from the sideline that say, geez, I wished I had asked that same question or I, yeah, I agree. I, I, I need to jump in on that. And that is your secondary area of developing business. And then your role is to watch for that. A lot of people don't have their account set up properly to give them notifications of when somebody actually says something good, bad, or indifferent about them. And it's very important. I mean, I open my LinkedIn before I open my email every day, and, and I watch for the notifications that are coming up. My notifications help drive what I'm doing for the first hour of my day in all cases, because it could be a reply to something that I've pushed out, or it could be a build up or a build on to something that I've positioned myself as being interested in. What we're experimenting with at the moment is like a second sales CRM. So I've got my core sales CRM where I you know, do my pipeline, et cetera. But what we're doing now is looking at a social listening tool where it'll have all your people that you're looking to engage with have all their posts all in one area so you can just go in so let's say you've got 200 people that you're actively looking to do business with at the moment you'll see all their activity on linkedin and twitter all in one area so you can go and like and comment uh, nimble is is a great example of that break code cold is another but you know i think that's where you can now use an inexpensive additional tool to help with that social selling and you can either get you know someone like peter to do that for you who really understands you and takes that work away from you or you can do it yourself but i know the option that you shouldn't be choosing which is not to doing it at all at, in today's environment and for you um peter around the podcasting so i know that you know we had to patiently wait for Alex to take the step to get on um, my podcast. But I sent him a note yesterday and he said, look, you know, the, the amount of views has been exceptional. So it's great. But what, what do you say to people that are a little cautious around getting on podcasts or just don't even know where to start to get on someone else's podcast? In most cases, the, the thing that's holding them back is they're nervous about being, you know, listened to or even seen on video, in all honesty. It is a big jump you know, for a lot of people to take. You know, I've talked to Alex often about, look, I was so happy to see him actually jump on your podcast because I said, we need you on more things like this because that's how people are going to know you. Like just static posting is not enough today. I usually let them know that there are other people out there that are probably in, you know, worse shape than themselves. But I don't push anybody. 
You know, you can't. I think you have to be sensitive to uh, how authentic, you know, they want to be and, yes. and what limitations. And that's why in my early days of working with my clients, I ask those hard and bold questions. I need to know where their nerves start rattling and how far to the edge can I push them? Because yes. I need to know who I'm managing here. If need be, I will draw back and wait for the right time or we'll do an interview. I'll record it uh, just to build daily uh, uh, content. And then I will develop something and send it to them and say, look at you, you look fantastic. You spoke well. And this is something that you should actually probably do more of. It's a matter of getting people to warm up to it in most cases, but yeah. I, I'll never push anybody. Yeah, and, and we said before, I think, you know, there's a lot of content that you've already got, right? If you're using something like Fathom or Fireflies or whatever you're using as a recorder, there's so much content that you've already got there that you can repurpose. And I know we mentioned off air, there's a, a, a friend of yours has got a tool called Lately.ai and Lately takes it can grab up to a hundred little snippets of video. So there's other tools out there that do a similar thing, but you can use that content that you've already generated in your normal course of business. And then you can turn that in because there's one thing that AI at the moment can't replicate, or it doesn't do it repeatedly is video of you, right? Because you are you, you're an authentic you, and anyone can create articles and whatever from uh, text-based stuff from chat GDP, but at the moment they re can't recreate you in your own voice. And I think that's the most powerful thing. And I think whether it's, you know, getting Peter to help you interview for, you know, 40 minutes a month and you've got all your content, I think that's a brilliant idea or whether you're using your content you've already got and using tools like lately.ai to then create snippets out of it. So look, Peter, I could talk to you forever about this. I think, you know, you do a wonderful job. Like you said, you come from the industry, so you really understand the industry and that makes a massive difference. But what we're going to do now is go to the rapid fire and I'm going to ask you four questions and get rapid responses to finish the episode. You ready for that? I am. All right, excellent. So the first one, what are some of the daily habits that help you and your clients uh, be successful? Well, I alluded to it a little bit earlier on in the fact that I jump on every day. Like I open up LinkedIn before I open up my email and engage with the notifications. You've got to get busy. In fact, I'll probably even do that before I even have breakfast. I just get right on, just on the phone, in there live and happening. It's a great habit to form. Great. The next thing is, where do you find out more about personal branding and, and your art? You know what? In the network. Remember I told you that it's a, uh, LinkedIn is a big trade show. There are amazing people out there that have got some great tools to help you do the best job. And in all honesty, I like and admire other individuals that are in this business. And I, I love watching them, hearing them. And I'm an artist. As it, you know, too. So I understand that you can steal a little here and pinch a little there and come up with a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't hurt Steve Jobs. Uh, and the next one is we could grant you one wish for Art Envy. What would that be? Yeah, I'm at a stage in my career where I'm actually doing that huge give back to people. Like I honestly, a mentor to some people, you know, I'm a coach to some people and I think I've arrived honesty so but i'm open to more of the same right and the last one is you know what do you know now certainly around this personal branding place and you being your brand that you wish you had have known earlier i wish they'd started earlier in all honesty you know i mean it took me you know i've, I've been at it now for about i think i'm in my 13th year i don't think the business was ready for me but i, I think i was doing some things like it for me, I look at your brand as your reputation. So as, a, as an old sales guy, I used to run with my reputation. Today, I run with my brand, which are one and the same thing. Yeah, brilliant. Well, look, it's been wonderful having you on, Peter. Um, I'm glad we got connected through Alex. And I know that you're going to help you, people that are listening right now, with getting their personal story out, that personal brand out, which is really the point of difference. People often say, I struggle with what my point of difference is. Well, you're looking at it. Look in the mirror. You are the point of difference. 
that makes all the difference. So um, you can find out more about Peter at Art Emery and you can go youareyourbrand.com and we'll have uh, links in all the show notes. Dot .ca. Uh, dot .ca, exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll have that in the, the show notes. But Peter, once again, thanks for coming on the show today. Cheers. Thanks very much. What a great interview with Peter. He's got so much energy and, and wisdom and he really does understand our industry. And I love the fact that he talks about doing those interviews. Just imagine getting interviewed for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then him going and using all of that content to win you more deals. Fantastic. Uh, reach out to Peter on LinkedIn. Like he said, he opens it up before he even has breakfast. So reach out to him there and say that you heard him here on the show. Also, there's other peers that you know want to get their voice out. They want to be a point of difference. They don't just want to be a, another Salesforce NetSuite, insert your platform partner and uh, share it with them. They'll love you for it. They'll think you're a rock star. Check out our solo shows and see you next time on the Paul Higgins Show. Time for action. Subscribe, comment, and let me know what you like best about this episode. Plus, get the Strategic Profits Blueprint at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash blueprint.